Okay, welcome everyone. Here we are, round two versus Port Adelaide. Um, after a very interesting round of footy in round one, um, if you tipped nine this week, then you're crazy. I don't understand how you did that. But uh, yeah, really, really rough week. It always kind of is round one. There's always that one surprise or two. But yeah, I think watching, I think I watched about, I watched eight games this week. And I must say, after watching the Blues on Thursday, I'm fairly confident as to where we stack up in comparison to the other teams. Um, especially the way that we ran the game out, even though like, we did sort of fall away in that fourth quarter. When you look at the, the data compared to the other matches, uh, I think we seem to be well prepared physically to run out games. So uh, that was something that I, I did pick up after the end of the, the round. Um, but it's all about Port Adelaide this week uh, in what is going to be a tough match. We're playing up there at uh, Adelaide Oval. I've got, a, I've got a lot of respect for Port Adelaide. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I head to Shanghai every year uh, since the beginning of the AFL China experiment. And I uh, volunteer there and uh, run around with Port Adelaide and uh, just sort of be a bit of a fixer for them and uh, whatever the, the players need, uh, whatever the club needs, I'm sort of just there as a helping hand. So I've sort of been able to be in the change room, be with the club, be with the players and sort of just observe and see what happens on the inside of a football club. And let me say this, Port Adelaide are very much uh, a well-led side. I know that Ollie Wines is, is out of the side with an injury, uh, but guys like Travis Boak, uh, a really vocal leader, really, you know, the gel of the group, he's obviously there. Um, Robbie Gray's a guy that just leads by example. They've got strong, uh, mature guys there, you know, Tom Jonas in defense. So uh, this is gonna be a tough game. And to be honest, I'm not, Totally surprised that they performed so well last week uh, because they've got a really good culture uh, within that club. I mean, you've got guys like Tom Rockliffe, who was underdone last year. He's obviously been a club captain and he copped a lot of flack. He comes into the mix in form now. So, yeah, we're going to have our, um, our work cut out for us. The thing with Carlton is we need to get a win early in the season. Um, we, we just have to. It's got to be one of the next two. Um, otherwise, heads start dropping. And then we fall into this hole of questioning ourselves, questioning our game plan. So this is a really important matchup. Let's look at last time they met. It was round 15, 2018, at the MCG. It was Katie Simpson's 300th match. And, uh, you know, obviously we weren't going so well, uh, but this is one game that we really, you know, I guess we, we got up for it. Um, you know, we just grinded it out for the first few quarters. We weren't out of the game. Uh, let's put it that way, but uh, yeah, we, you know, it, it was just sort of Port were playing down to our standards. We really made it a bit of a scrap. Um, you know, turnovers and goals in red time ultimately is what cost us the game. Simo had 37 touches, Murphy 32, Cripps 33. Uh, they were the, the usual um, suspects for Carlton. Charlie Kerner kicked four goals, but it was just there were just moments in that fourth quarter from. Motlop, Wingard and Dixon as Port just put the game away in the end and they ended up winning by um, 31 points. So that was that, but uh, it's a new era and uh, we're a much better side this year. We've got a lot of, um, you know, we've got another layer of, of, of running power and talent and, you know, experience in the side. So I think it's going to be a totally different setup and I'll talk about that in a moment. So what am I excited about? I'm excited uh, to see if we can limit these horrific turnovers that we that we did last time we played them, then we were really a shot to, to take it up to him this week. Uh, I'm excited for another round of our forward line to develop. Charlie was obviously not great, probably his worst game of his career last week, but you know that's not gonna be something that's constant. So I'm looking forward to seeing this forward line get up and going. You know, Harry got off the leash a little bit last week. So what's gonna happen eventually is, you know, Harry will get off in one moment and then all of a sudden Mitch will get off the hook and then Charlie's left open. So we're just waiting for that one game, I think, where all three of them just click and off we go. Um, I'm look excited about being able to run out quarters better. Like I've mentioned it uh, earlier in this episode and even last week, we, we seem to concede moments and goals in red time of quarters. So I'm looking forward to seeing that come to an end, uh, if not this week, then in the coming weeks. Um, and without Ollie Wines in the Port Adelaide midfield, I'm looking forward to seeing Cripps and how he goes. He should be able to get first use of the ball, whether Ollie Wines is in there or not, to be quite honest. Um, but having that first use of the ball gives us the opportunity to then play our game style. So looking forward to that. 
Um, I don't think Dixon will play. When I wrote this uh, this preview, I thought he might have been playing, but I don't think he'll be playing. And that's obviously a, a big positive for us because he's just a big body that takes our best defender. So I'm excited to see that our defenders will have a little bit more, I wouldn't say freedom, but you know, guys like maybe Jacob Wiedering can play more to his strengths than having to necessarily play that lockdown defensive role. What am I mindful about? I uh, I was very impressed with Port Adelaide last week. Um, you know, you, some people could say that you know Melbourne were just underdone, but uh, Port Adelaide's running power and their want and ability to be daring through the corridor is something that I'm definitely mindful of. And if we turn the ball over, I can see that converting into quick scores for them. So that's something we've really got to be careful with. Um, I mean, secondly, it's it's always a big ask to get a, a win away from home, especially with a younger group. Um, but getting a result from either of the Adelaide teams in Adelaide is definitely a task. Um, I'm mindful about Robbie Gray. This guy's a superstar. This guy's a, a champion. He's come off two knee reconstructions, and he's one of the one of the most prolific forwards. You know that, that forward slash mid role is is one. You know before Dustin Martin was um, you know winning Brown winning the Brownlow. You know, Robbie Gray was that guy, and I still think he's one of the best you know, mid-forwards that we have in the competition. He's just so prolific, he's so talented, and uh, I've got a lot of respect for him. So I'm very mindful of him and the matchup. I don't know who goes to him. I think Plowman's a little bit too slow. Um, Nick Newman could maybe be someone that we can think about there, but that's one that I'm thinking about. Um, if we don't put a good showing in this week, uh, the pressure's going to mount on the boys quickly. And like I said earlier, we need to get an early win in this season because we look competitive in round one. We also look competitive in round one last year. So the jury is still out. And I think the playing group still have full confidence in what they're able to do. I think they'd be thinking about, you know, we didn't start well last week. We didn't run the game out last week. Um, we're going to be fitter this week. We're going to be better for the run. Um, and so I'm mindful of if we cannot get these uh, results in the early part of the season of that pressure mounting and the boys falling into that hole. So that's just something I'm I'm thinking about. And then there's also the unknown factor of Port. I think they're gonna be good this year. I think they're gonna be a bit better than what we all expected them to be. I know that they're, they're, the four debutants all played well last week and you know, can you expect that to happen every week? Probably not, but they're playing at home. So you would expect their debutants to be a lot more comfortable and a lot better at, uh, at Adelaide Oval. So. That's how I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm very excited to have the footy back again, obviously. It's a 9, 10 a.m. start here on Saturday. So there'll be no interruptions. And looking forward to getting into it. And hopefully we can get our first win of the season on the board. What do you think? Um, who comes in? Who comes out? What's the prediction for you? Let me know in the comments below.